السلام عليكم ورحمة الله today إن شاء الله we're going to solve Cambridge exam May June 2021 paper 22 let's start it first question a gas is released at point P in the apparatus shown which gas turn the damn universal indicator paper red most quickly turn it red means it's an acid so ammonia is wrong because it's basic and it will turn the paper into blue color you know of course that chlorine and sulfur dioxide gases dissolve in water to give an acid so here you have to compare between the molar masses of these three gases you will find that HCl has the lowest molar mass so it has the highest rate of diffusion it will diffuse faster reach to the paper first and turns red most quickly a mixture of colorless compound is separated using chromatography which type of reagent is used to detect these compounds after separation for this colorless spot to be easily detected you have to use a locating agent which is an agent to react with a sample to produce colored spots a third question which statement about paper chromatography is correct a solvent is needed to dissolve the paper this is of course wrong paper chromatography separate mixture of solvent this is also wrong because chromatography is used to separate inks pigments glucose amino acid dyes okay uh, C is the solvent should cover the baseline this is also wrong because the solvent should be below the baseline uh, the answer is D baseline should be drawn in pencil this is correct because pencil unlike ink will not dissolve in the solvent and it will not interfere with the results question 4 element X has 7 protons element Y has 8 more protons than X 8 more means it's 15 protons here you can use your periodic table to know that element X is nitrogen and element Y is phosphorus from the electronic configuration of these two elements you can know that both have a five electron in their outer shell so they both in group five in the periodic table and uh, element Y has an extra shell than X here a first answer Y has more electron shell than X this is correct y, uh, B Y has more electron in the outer shell than X this is wrong because both have five electrons in their outer shell C Y is in a different group in the periodic table this is wrong because number of the group is the same as number of the outer shell electrons so they both in group 5 a D Y is in the same period this is wrong because the number of the period equal to the number of shells so element X is in period 2 and element Y is in period 3 question 5 a covalent molecule Q contain only six shared electrons which one is Q here I draw the covalent bond for each of these molecules you can count number of electrons shared we will find ammonia share six electrons so the answer will be a information about four substance E F G and H is shown you know that these elements are graphite polyethene sodium chloride silicon oxide but not in that order so here from the information given in this table melting point and electrical conductivity you can deduce which one represent which letter here the first element E has high melting point but doesn't conduct electricity so it may be a giant covalent compound second one has high F has high melting point but conduct electricity when solid it may be metal or graphite third one G has low melting point and doesn't conduct electricity so it is a covalent compound and its insulator H has high melting point and conduct when molten so it's definitely ionic compound here we can find easily that ionic compound is sodium chloride it's H here and G is polyethene which is insulator and F is graphite because we don't have metal here so F is graphite and the answer will be D question 7 chemical compounds form form it from a group 1 element and a group 7 element contain ionic bond this ionic bond formed between group 1 and group 7 elements how are the ionic bond formed ionic 
bone formed between group 1 and group 7. Group 1 form positive ion by losing one electron and group 7 form a negative ion by gaining one electron. So here, electrons are transferred from group 7 to group 1. This is wrong. Electrons are shared. This is also wrong because ionic bond uh, uh, involve transferring of electrons, not sharing of electrons. C. Electrons are lost from group 1 and group 7. This is wrong. We can know that electrons are lost from group 1 and gained by group 7. So the answer will be D. Electrons are transferred from group 1 atom to group 7 atoms. Question 8. Some information about particles B, Q, R, and S is shown. Nucleon number, number of neutrons, and number of electrons. Here, number of electrons may be misleading because you have positive and negative ions. So you have to calculate the number of protons to know which two particles are isotopes. Isotopes have the same number of protons and different number of neutrons. Here, I calculate the number of protons for each of these four elements. Here, we find that P and S have the same number of protons, 6 and 6, so the answer will be B. Question 9. Chlorine gas will react with iron matter. Exactly 21.3 grams of chlorine react with 11.2 grams of iron. How many iron atoms react with 30 molecules of chlorine? First, we will calculate the number of moles for each one. Number of moles equal to the mass divide the molar mass. Here for chlorine will be 21.3 divide the molar mass which is 71 and take care about that because chlorine is diatomic so you have to multiply 35.5 by 2 to give you 71 and the for uh, iron 11.2 divide 56 so the ratio between their molar masses is 0.3 for chlorine and 0.2 for iron how many iron atom will react to with 30 molecules of chlorine from this ratio you you will find that 20 atoms of uh, iron needed to react with 30 molecules of chlorine using this ratio and cross multiplication you will find the answer is c20 question 10 in separate experiment electricity was passed through concentrated aqueous sodium chloride and molten lead bromide what would happen in both experiments? Here, the answer should be correct for both experiments, not only for one. A. A halogen would be formed at the anode. This is correct answer. Because here, in case of molten lead bromide, you will have bromine gas discharged at the anode. And in case of sodium chloride, it's concentrated solution. So, you will have enough chloride ions and chlorine gas will be discharged at the anode. B. A metal would be formed at the cathode. This is, will happen only in case of lead bromide. So it's wrong answer. C. Hydrogen would be formed at the anode. Of course, this is wrong because hydrogen are positive ions. D. Hydrogen would be formed at the cathode. And this is also wrong because it's only in case of sodium chloride, not in case of molten lead bromide. Question 11. Reaction involving aluminium is shown. Which values of X and Y balancing the equation? To balance this equation, you have to know that the number of atoms entering the reaction equal to number of atoms exit from the reaction. Here we have 6 by 2, 12 hydrogen atoms. So still need to have 12 hydrogen atoms exit from the reaction. We have only 3 here. We will multiply by 4 to get 12 hydrogen atoms. So the value of X will be 4 still need to balance oxygen atom if x equal to 4 here in, in the product aluminium hydroxide so we will also have 12 oxygen atoms six of them here enter the reaction in case of six water molecule and here we still need to have uh, other six in case of uh, y three multiplied by two will give us six so the value of y will be three and the value of x will be four Question 12, 
Four different fuels are used to heat beaker of water for the same amount of time, using the apparatus shown. The initial temperature of water and the temperature after heating by the fuel are recorded. Which fuel releases the most heat energy? The one that releases the most heat energy is that one that gives the greatest difference between the initial and final temperature. Here I calculate the difference in temperature for the four fuels. We will find here C has the greatest difference between the initial and final temperature, so fuel C releases the most heat energy. Question 13. An excess of calcium carbonate react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Here we have calcium carbonate in excess, so the hydrochloric acid will be the limiting reagent. The volume of carbon dioxide produced is measured at regular intervals. The results are shown here in experiment one, and the experiment is repeated with only one change in the reaction condition, and the result is shown here by this curve in experiment two. Which change is made in experiment two. A concentration of the acid increase. Of course, in increase in the concentration of the acid will increase the volume of carbon dioxide, but the curve will be different. The curve in this case will be as I drawn here in the left side. If we increase the concentration of the curve, gives us a higher rate from the start, and the curve will be steeper, means it is closer to the y-axis so if we increase the, increase the concentration of the acid, we will get different curve than drawn here in this question. B, increasing the volume of the acid. This will be correct answer because increasing the volume will increase the volume of the carbon dioxide produced and you still have the same rate. So this, the curve will be correct and the answer will be B. The mass of calcium carbonate increase. This is wrong because it's already in excess. Calcium carbonate is powdered. This will increase the rate of reaction, but will not increase the volume of carbon dioxide, so D is wrong. 14. When sulfur is heated, it undergoes what change as it melts? Melting is a physical process, so it's a physical change. Further heating causes the sulfur to undergo what change? and form sulfur dioxide. Here, sulfur dioxide, new substance is forming. It's burning, it's chemical reaction, so the answer would be chemical change. The answer would be C. Question 15. Four statement about the effect of increasing temperature on a reaction are shown. One, the activation energy becomes lower. This, of course, wrong. Two, the particles move faster. This is right because increasing temperature increases the kinetic energy of the particles. It moves faster. Three, the more collision between reactant particles per second. This is, of course, right. Moving faster means more collision. Four, they are mo there are more collisions which have energy greater than the activation energy. And this is, of course, correct. So the answer will be C. Question 16. An example of Redox reaction is shown. Which statement about the reaction is correct? Here, you can find the copper plus two ions converted into copper metal. So the oxidation state of copper changes it from plus two to zero. This means decreasing in the oxidation state, it's reduction. Copper accept two electrons and form copper metal. So accepting electron is reduction. A, zinc is oxidizing agent and it oxidizes cover, this is wrong. B, zinc is oxidizing agent, reduces cover, this is of course wrong. Zinc is reducing agent and oxidizes cover, this is of course wrong. D, zinc is reducing agent and it reduces cover, and this is the correct answer. Question 17, bismuth 3 chlorides react with water, a white precipitate of bismuth 3 chloride is formed, and the equation for the reaction here is shown. The reaction is in equilibrium, which change causes the white precipitate to dissolve? To dissolve this white precipitate means the reaction is shifted to the left toward formation of more reactants. So if we increase one of the products, like the protons or the chloride ions, 
here the system will oppose this change and go to the left side toward formation of more reactants. So we have to notice here the answer adding acid means increasing the proton will shift the reaction to left side. A1 is correct. Adding water, water is one of the reactant. So this will shift the reaction to the right side. So this answer is wrong, water is wrong. Adding sodium chloride, this will increase the chloride ions. And as we told here, this will shift the reaction to the left. So the only correct answer here will be one and three. The answer will be B. Question 18. Element X forms an oxide XO that neutralizes sulfuric acid. Which row describe X and XO? Neutralizes sulfuric acid means it's a basic oxide. So we know that metals form basic oxide and non-metal form acidic oxide. The answer here will be B. The element will be metal and the oxide form is basic oxide. Question 19. Information about the solubility of salts is shown. Chloride salts soluble except for lead and silver chloride. Nitrate salts are all soluble. Sulfate soluble except for barium sulfate and lead sulfate. Aqueous solution of which of these two compounds would produce precipitate when added together? Here I write the equation for uh, the four uh, answers given here. And in the first three cases, the all the uh, products are soluble. Only here in the fourth one, number D, we get precipitate of lead sulfate, which is precipitate already mentioned in the table that lead sulfate is insoluble, so the answer will be D. Question 20. The equation shows the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. The bond energy is shown. Which row shows the energy change and the type of the reaction? First, we need to calculate the energy change, bond formation and bond breaking. Hydrogen, hydrogen bond, 436 multiplied by 2 here, and 1 double bond oxygen is 495. So the bond breaking is 1,367. Bond formation here we have oxygen, hydrogen with 463. This will be multiplied by 4. The answer will be 1,852. So the energy change will be minus 485. This means this reaction is exothermic and the difference will be the energy change will be 485. Question 21. Burning fossil fuel releases sulfur dioxide which lead to acid rain. Which ion in the rain causes the rain to be acidic? The protons is the, uh, the uh, bro proton is, are the ions responsible for acidity, so ions in the acid rains are protons. Question 22. Which statement about the trend shown by the elements of period 3 in the periodic table is not correct? The element becomes less metallic across the period. This is correct. The element, as we go to the right side of the periodic table, the element becomes less metallic, so, so this is not the answer. The group number increases across the period. Of course, as we go right, we increase the group number. So this will not be the answer. C, the number of electron shells increases across the period. This is not correct. Number of shells equal to the number of the period. Here we are looking for which one is not correct. So C is not correct. Number of shells will not increase across the period. Rem number of shells remains the same across the period, so the answer will be C. D, the number of outer electron increases in the across the period, number of outer electrons increases across the period. This is correct statement, so the answer will be C. It is the only one which is not correct. Question 23. The diagram here shows the position of element E, F, and G h in the periodic table which statement about e f g and h are correct e and f are in group one g and h are in group seven he here asked about the trend for both groups 
So in case of group one, melting point decreases down the group and the density increases down the group. So here, E has a higher density than F. This is wrong answer. E has a higher melting point than F. This is correct answer. We can find this from the trend here. The trend for group seven here, the color gets darker as we go down the group and the melting point increase as we go down the group. So here, three, G has a darker color than H. This will be wrong. And four, G has a lower melting point than H. And this is correct statement. So the answer will be D, two and four are correct. Question 24. When aqueous iodine is added to a solution of vanadium ions, the vanadium ions, each one loses one electron. When vanadium plus two ions loses one electron, so it will convert to vanadium plus three ions. Which property of the transition metal is shown by this reaction? The only property shown here that the transition elements or the transition metals have a variable oxidation state because here, we have two ions with two different oxidation states. Question 25. A piece of aluminum is dropped into a dilute hydrochloric acid. No immediate reaction is observed. Which statement explains this observation? A. Aluminum doesn't neutralize the acid. This is, of course, wrong. B. Aluminum is a non-metal, so it doesn't react with acid. Of course, this is wrong. Aluminum is metal. C. Aluminium is below, below hydrogen in the reactivity series. This is, of course, wrong. Aluminium is a highly reactive metal. D. Aluminium is covered in an unreactive oxide layer, and thus will the layer that protects aluminium from uh, corrosion is the presence of aluminium oxide layer in the top of the aluminium. So the answer will be D. Question 26. Some metals, nitrates, and carbonate decomposes when heat strongly. Metal Q has nitrate that decomposes to give a salt and colorless gas only. The carbonates of metal Q doesn't decompose when heat with a benzene, benzene burner. What is metal Q? Metals of group one below sodium, carbonate of sodium and metal below sodium are stable to heat and they don't decompose. So stable metal carbonates means it's for sodium or any metal below sodium. And for the sodium nitrate, it gives a salt and a colorless gas here as given in this equation. Sodium nitrate decomposes to give a salt, which is sodium nitrite in ANO2 plus an oxygen gas. So the metal here will be sodium. Question 27. Aluminium is extracted from its ore by electrolysis. Which equation represents the reaction that occurs at the anode during electrolysis? Here, we are making electrolysis for molten aluminium oxide. So, the only ions present here are aluminium ions and oxygen ions. So, at the anode, of course, the negative ions of oxygen will be discharged here as oxygen gas. So we need two O to negative two to give one molecule of oxygen and releases four electrons. Question 28. Mild steel consists mostly of iron. Mild steel can be prevented from rusting by a process called galvanize, galvanizing. Galvanizing means coating with zinc. Copper is not a very strong metal. However, it is mixed with a suitable metal strong alloy called brass is produced. The brass is an alloy for copper with zinc. So, which statement here is correct? Copper corrodes very quickly when wet and the brass doesn't. This is wrong. Copper is mixed with zinc to produce brass. This is correct answer because we know that the alloy copper with zinc is called brass. C. Galvanizing mild steel change it from a pure metal into alloy. This is wrong because galvanizing is only coating with zinc, not mixing with zinc. D. When a steel object is galvanized, this means it is coated with a thin layer of tin 
And this is wrong because we are already mentioned here that galvanizing is coating with zinc. So the answer will be B. 29. Water is used for irrigation of crops and for drinking water. Which uses must water be, in which uses water must be chlorinated? Water must be chlorinated for drinking because chlorination is disinfection of water, killing bacteria and microorganisms. This is, of course, will happen for drinking water, so the answer would be C. Question 30. Which nature, natural resource cannot provide a raw material for the manufacture of ammonia? The raw materials for manufacture of ammonia is hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas. Nitrogen can be provided from air, and hydrogen can be provided from petroleum, cracking of uh, hydrocarbons. And of course, uh, hydrogen can also uh, be provided from water by electrolysis. So the only resource here that cannot provide any raw material is limestone. So the answer will be B. Question 31. Ammonia is made in hopper process. Which condition are used in the hopper process? We already revised this before, and you have to memorize all the conditions for hopper process. Temperature 450, 200 atmospheric pressure, and the catalyst used is iron. So the answer is A. Question 32. Which process in the carbon cycle is responsible for removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? The only process that uses carbon dioxide is the photosynthesis, so using carbon dioxide is removing from the atmosphere. The answer would be photosynthesis. Question, Question 33. The equation represents two reactions, B and Q, of lime, which is calcium oxide. This is equation B, and this is equation Q. In which process do these reactions occur? First one, B, calcium oxide, is used to remove silica in the blast ferns by formation of slag. So this process happened in the extraction of iron. Second equation, Q, calcium oxide used to treat sulfur dioxide that produces from power station. The sulfur dioxide gas passed over alkaline substance like calcium oxide to form calcium sulfide. So we prevent the harmful gas, sulfur dioxide, from escaping into the atmosphere. And this process is known as desulfuration. Desulfuration means removing of sulfur dioxide. So here, the first one is in extraction of iron, and the second equation in the gas desulfuration, so the answer will be B. Question number 34. Which statement about ethanol is not correct? Ethanol can be made by fermentation. This one is correct statement. Ethanol is oxidized to make ethanoic acid. This is also wrong, uh, right statement. Ethanol reacts with oxygen exothermically to make uh, this make it good fuel, and this is correct statement also. So the only one which is not correct here, ethanol reacts with propanoic acid to make propyl ethanoate. The correct answer is to make acyl propanoate. So the answer will be D. Question 35, which pair of formula represent two alkane? Here, the general formula of alkane is CnH2n plus two, and this can be applied here for the two formulas in the answer A, CH4 and C8H18. These two can be represented by the formula Sn, CnH2n plus two. Question 36, which statement about alkane is correct? First one, they burn in oxygen. This one is correct. They contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. This is wrong because they only contain hydrogen and carbon. C, they contain double bonds. This is wrong because alkane, only single bond, they are saturated compounds. D, they contain ionic bonds. This is wrong also because alkane only contain covalent bonds. So the only correct statement here is A, they burn in oxygen and they are used as fuels. 37, which statement about ethanoic acid are correct? One, it's a strong acid. This is wrong, of course. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid. 
Two, it reacts with ethanol to form an ester. This is correct. It has a formula of CH3COOH, and this is correct. So two and three here is correct, and the answer will be C. Question 38. The flow chart show how petroleum B turned into a plastic. Here, petroleum undergoes process one to form saturated hydrocarbons. Then a process two to form unsaturated hydrocarbons, that means compound with double bonds. Then a process three to form plastic. What are process one and two? One, two, and three. Process one is forming from petroleum, we get saturated hydrocarbon. This happened by the fractional distillation of petroleum and the products will be saturated hydrocarbon with single bonds. So the first process is fractional distillation. From alkane, we get unsaturated hydrocarbons here by the process of cracking. Cracking of alkane gives us alkene plus hydrogen gas. So the second process will be cracking. And from the alkene, we can, from the alkene, we can get plastic polymer by polymerization. So the answer here will be C. Question 39. The structure of synthetic polymer is shown. The structure shows it is a what compound? It's an polyamide. It's a polyamide because it has amide linkage. So this polymer is polyamide. It is formed by what, poly, what kind of polymerization? This kind of polymerization is known as condensation polymerization. Which word completes the gaps in one and two? This is a polyamide polymer because it has the amide linkage, which is so CO and H. This is amide linkage, and it is formed by condensation polymerization. Question 40. Which substance is a natural polymer? The only natural polymer here is protein because ethene is not a polymer and trilene and nylon are synthetic polymers. So the only natural polymer here is protein and the answer will be D. Here we come to the end of our exam. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.